if you guys are like me, you are probably fascinated with the subject of mind control or mind, as I prefer to call them, mind manipulation technologies. And there is a very, very interesting story. And the reason I'm talking about this on today's News and Views is there is a very interesting article by Alberto Pena on Yahoo about what's happening in Chile. And the article drops a few tidbits that turn out to be bombshells, all right? So I want to bring this article to your attention. I'll link it when this posts. Um, but the context here is if you've been following the mind manipulation technology story, this goes all the way back to the Yale psychologist, Dr. Jose Delgado, uh, back in the 50s and 60s, uh, who wrote a book, The Psychic Control of America. <laughs> and it's, it's quite revealing about what Dr. Delgado wanted to do and uh, perfect technocrat. He basically wanted to control everybody right down to their thoughts. But the reason I'm talking about this is in recent years, we've seen evidence of some sort of mind, remote control, mind manipulation technology. More recently in Havana, Cuba, with the attacks on the American and Canadian embassy personnel. But in the last few weeks, we've been hearing stories about people in Washington, D.C., apparently being subject to similar types of technology. They're experiencing headaches, they're hearing strange sounds, and so on and so forth. And they're a bit, uh, they're a bit disoriented. So I want to read several paragraphs from uh, Mr. Pena's article here, and I want you to listen very closely because the article contains a lot of admissions for people that don't believe that such technology is either possible or that exists. And there's something in this article that uh, suggests to me the technologies that I talked about in my book, Microcosm and Medium. This is a Lulu book. And I want to mention one of those technologies in particular in conjunction with this article once we get through it. All right. So this article appeared on April 29th, which is not too far ago, on Yahoo, and the title of the article is Mind-Blowing, Advances in Brain Tech Spur Push for Neuro Rights. And here we go, quote, As a sci-fi thriller, Inception topped box offices around the world, Audiences were delighted and appalled by its futuristic story of a criminal gang invading people's dreams to steal valuable data. More than a decade on, the technology envisioned by filmmaker Christopher Nolan is likely not far off, according to experts in Chile, who have moved the security debate beyond burglar alarms to safeguarding the most valuable real estate people ever own, their minds. The South, Af pardon me, the South American nation is aiming to be the world's first to legally protect citizens' neuro rights, with lawmakers expected to pass a constitutional reform blocking technology that seeks to, quote, increase, diminish, or disturb, unquote, people's mental integrity without their consent. Opposition Senator Guido Girardi, one of the uh, authors of the legislation, is worried about technology, whether algorithms, bionic implants, or some other gadgetry that could threaten, quote, the essence of humans, their autonomy, their freedom, and their free will, unquote. If this technology manages to read your mind before you're even aware of what you're thinking, he told AFP, it could write emotions into your brain life stories that aren't yours and that your brain won't be able to distinguish whether they were yours or the product of designers, unquote. Skipping a bit now. In 2013, then U.S. President Barack Obama promoted the brain, brain research through advancing innovative neurotechnologies initiative, which aimed to study the causes of brain disorders such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and epilepsy. Back in Chile, 
Science Minister Andres Cuve told the AFP the neuro rights debate, quote, is part of a consolidation of new scientific institutionality in the country that is now capturing international attention, unquote. But many are worried about the potential for nefarious actors to abuse technological advances. <laughs> really? Chile's President Sebastián Piñera proposed at last week's Ibero-American Summit in Andorra that count countries legislate together on the thorny issue. Quote, I call on all Ibero-American countries to anticipate the future and to adequately protect now, not just our citizens' data and information, but also their thoughts, their feelings, their neuronal information, and to prevent these from being manipulated by new technologies, unquote, the conservative Pinera said. The Chilean bill contains four main fields of legislation, guarding the human mind's data or neurodata, fixing limits to the neurotechnology of reading and especially writing in brains. Latch on to that one, folks. That's huge. Setting an equitable distribution and access to these technologies. In other words, make them public. And putting limits on neuroalgorithms. Spanish scientist Rafael Yuste, an expert on the subject from Columbia University in New York, told AFP that some of these technologies already exist. Now, let me repeat that. We just had, oh boy, here, the mail runs right now <laughs> during my news and news. It's okay, little girl. That's the canine home security unit. No, you go lay down. You go lay down. I hear the mail. <laughs> so we have the bill in Chile talking about equitable distribution and reading and writing technologies. That's the crucial point. And then we have the Columbia experts saying these technologies already exist, all right? So do the math here of what is really being said in the article. Now let me skip a couple paragraphs and give you three more outtakes from this article. If you can enter there, this is Yuste, the Colombian expert or Columbia University expert. If you can enter there into the chemical process of the, of the brain and stimulate or inhibit them, you can change people's decisions. This is something we've already done with animals, unquote, said Yuste. The risk is that without proper safeguards, the technology might be used to alter people's thoughts, employing algorithms, algorithms via the internet. In other words, this Folks, that is a huge tell because they just admitted something I've been saying for years, that any electrical circuitry, including the circuitry in your home, including your computer, can be used as a broadcast mechanism if you know how to do it, all right? And what they're really saying here is they can manipulate subtly algorithms on your computer to influence your mind, all right? Now, let me, let me get back to this. The risk is that without proper safeguards, the technology might be used to alter people's thoughts, employing algorithms via the Internet to reprogram their hard wiring to dictate their interests, preferences, or patterns of consumption. Skipping another paragraph. Neurotechnology can be scary if you think about dystopian science fiction scenarios. However, for every dystopian scenario, there are 10 beneficial ones, said Yuste, who sees neurotechnology as a new renaissance for humanity, unquote. So, folks, what this article is, and the reason I'm tr bringing it to your attention today, is basically it's an admission now at an official national level, coming from Chile, that, number one, the technology exists, Number two, it's a read-write technology. In other words, they can read your brain and they can write information into it depending on manipulation of algorithms and so on and so forth. Now, let me go back to my book here for a moment. Uh, that's, that's Microcosm and Medium I'm talking about. Let me go back to that book for a moment. Because in that book, I pointed out that mind manipulation technology comes in all sorts of disguises and guises from advertising, from art, from music, 
to the hard technology of actually using microwave interferometry to modulate information onto a broadcast beam and use that to manipulate a person's brain, all right? And I pointed out in that book something very interesting. Remember, this is a not only a write technology, it's a read technology. In that book, I pointed out that back in the 1970s, the people involved in the American mind control projects were constructing what they what I was calling an electroencephalographic dictionary, that they would read words to people and record their electroencephalograms and notice the brainwave patterns associated with particular words, okay? And once they had done this with a number of people, they could begin to recognize the patterns, the brainwave patterns associated with particular words. So in other words, they compiled in the 1970s a small dictionary of brainwave patterns of particular words, all right? Now, that's the 1970s, and the number of entries in that dictionary was a couple of thousand. But in the book, I detail information that indicates that they had expanded those, those electroencephalographic dictionaries to about 70,000. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because I think that very concept is really at the heart of what they're talking about in this article. Because once you know those patterns you can modulate those patterns onto an, a, a microwave beam that you're projecting at someone's mind and actually inject interior conversations. And there are people who have claimed that this is, has been done to them. You can also modulate information to cause people to hear sounds. You can cause them to have... Uh, brain or neurological dysfunction, and so on. You can literally remotely alter their emotions. Now, that in itself is fascinating, but what's also very suggestive here in this article, and, you know, when I read this thing, folks, my jaw was just on the floor because, obviously, whoever is behind this in Chile, up to and including the president of Chile himself, um whoever is doing this are very, very, in my opinion, well-informed as to what the capabilities actually are. So the other thing that falls out, you'll recall, is that they want to, uh, as the article puts it, setting an extra equ equitable distribution and access to these technologies. So in other words, what they are trying to do is not only bring the technologies out, but they're also signaling in a very subtle way that it's now time to start developing technologies to defend against these types of things. And you can do that. It can be done. But uh, what I'm suggesting here is in the next 10 years, <laughs> I'm just making one of my typical off the end of the twig, uh, high octane speculations here. But I suspect in the next 10 years that you're going to see beginning to appear on the public market claims or technologies that claim to protect you from precisely this type of uh, mental neuro, uh, neural and neurophysiological influence. So brace yourselves, folks. <laughs> the mind manipulation era is official. It's here. And eventually what we're going to see is we're going to see a public response to it and a new growth industry, <laughs> to put it that way. Anyway, um, I again, I'll, I'll link this article. You've got to you've got to read it. It's not very long, but it's just chock full of very interesting, useful information, admissions, acknowledgments, and so on and so forth. Uh, please, please do read it. All right, that is it, folks. Um, yeah, a new market, uh, Michael uh, Michael with Stanley or Wistonley. Uh, just said it in the in the chat room, a new technology to exploit, a, a new growth industry. Anyway, don't forget the uh, short format vid chat kicks off the vid chats for the month of May, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow. So please, folks, those of you out there who are um, wanting to submit questions, you can do so. I put the uh, questions and comments link up in the members area already, so you can do that. 
and then the regular uh, long format vid chats will resume in two weeks. Thank you for being patient with me during my absence during uh, Holy Week and uh, for my absence to, due to lightning strikes and everything else. Anyway, thank yeah, Elon Musk won't be happy. I agree uh, that uh, Sarab Shah just said that in the chat room. Anyway, um, but thanks for tuning in, folks. I'll see you in a week uh, on the flip side. Bye-bye, everybody, and God bless.